Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the Market Update. I'm your host, Bill Noble. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. All right. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. Let's welcome everybody who's joining the stream. All right. <laughs> we have a research group that wants to be first on the stream. Wizard, Aiken, Notorious Love. Thank you. YOLO72, Flipped Burger. Hi. Okay. Omar, Joe, Driftless. Always nice to see you again. Okay. Flip Burger saying, hey, hit the like button. Hello from Poland. Bless y'all in Poland for what you're doing out there. Love y'all. Mexico, Belgium, with some notorious love. Munich, Germany, okay? We have Nevada, Nigeria, right? All corners of the globe. Oklahoma, Boomer Sooner. San Paulo, Brazil. Australia up late at night. Much love to you guys, okay? We have Kentucky, Jersey, Florida, okay? <laughs> Driving on a golf cart today, listening to the market update. That is what I'm talking about. We have our friends, as always, from the UK, Columbia, all right? Jupiter, Milky Way, King feeling the hurt in near. We'll talk about it, all right? So, this market, huh? <laughs> I believe my line was, I like it. Let's see if we get a small dip. And of course, the market shits the bed, right? It doesn't pay to be bullish after it goes up. And it probably doesn't pay to be bearish when it goes down, right? Let's talk about that because I'm going to be honest with you, right? We're going outside the box today. Probably going way outside the box. You're right, Bill. You're always outside the box. Yeah, I'm talking about, yeah, okay. We're going outside the box, outside the box, all right? And let's, let, let's keep our fingers crossed that I beat everyone to this idea. All right, so here comes your market update. Now, the next inflation trade, okay? All right, so flipped burgers like, please give me some good news, love from Kuwait. And one of our listeners likes it outside the box. So if you like it outside the box, here comes the next inflation trade. One administrative note, 10% off lifetime token metrics. If you sign up and you don't cancel, you are going to want to see what our AI has to say about PAX Gold. Matter of fact, our AI has been all over PAX Gold for a while. There are other small coins it likes too. Don't miss that. RAI does its best work when something is consolidating and sometimes it can, it can catch huge trends before they start. Now, if you go to a cocktail party and you happen to run into a bunch of legacy people, all right, or say you're at Bitcoin Miami or some conference like that, you want to sound cool, you could say, you know, Five-year inflation break-evens just made a new high. <laughs> You're like, Bill, what the fuck is that? All right, let me tell you. So the bond market has this kind of cool indicator, right? Said, all right, for a five-year loan or a five-year bond, tell me what the number is that you would need to give me in interest to account for inflation as we understand it today. Our expectations. Okay. So not surprisingly, five-year break-evens or, you know, the rate that legacy people would want, 
for interest plus inflation has made a new high. All right. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Let me plot that against ETHE, which is just the stock market's version of ETH. So just say ETH. So let me get this straight. For, for 2020 and 2021, right? Or actually, let, let me say it this way. For all of 2021, every time inflation expectations rally and then made new highs, ETH rallied and made new highs. So if you look up at the top, right, there's two examples from April and October of last year where inflation expectations in legacy, let's call it, exploded and ETH went with it. Now, I was like, wow. And then if you look back at 2020, I just saw this now, inflation's expectations exploded, right, while, while ETH didn't do as well, okay? Now, I, which is it, right? Should ETH follow inflation? I mean, should ETH really be at 2,500, given that inflation's making a new high? Like, if you go back to the 2021 examples, I mean, ETH was on a clear upward trajectory with inflation break-evens. All right, so maybe there's NFT hedging, Maybe hedge funds had to puke out their ETH because all the other risk assets are doing poorly. But I'm like, wait a minute. You know, Bitcoin, new monetary regime, right? The future of money. Ethereum, why has Ethereum been left out, right? Ethereum is very correlated with things like gold and metals, which have just done nothing but go up lately. So I have no idea what Ethereum is doing at 2,500. Now, if they dump it in my face and it goes to 2,000, well, you know what? F them. I know it's trading. It's P&L. I know this is a TV show and I'm an analyst. You got to trade. You got to have real money. But I'm just looking at this and I'm like, I am not getting bearish Ethereum at 2,500. Maybe it goes lower. We'll talk about that later. I'm not getting bullish. I'm sorry. I'm not going to get bearish Ethereum looking at this picture with inflation exploding. All right. Now let's talk about the counter argument. What is the rationale to be worried about crypto? Well, it's the damn dollar index, man. I thought the dollar index was going to do like a false breakout V top reversal. And as it turned out, it came right to the top of the expanding range and they started buying the dollar again. Understandably, because, you know, there's a lot of messed up stuff going up in the world. And when that happens, people start buying the dollar. It's as simple as that. Does that make sense to crypto people? No. Okay. But in legacy or in emerging market countries, when people start freaking out and they can't borrow dollars, they start buying it in the foreign exchange market. Okay. So dollar index could go up. Euro may have serious problems. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, <laughs> European interest rates, EU10Y, oh my God, interest rates up massively today from zero to 25 basis points. I mean, that is just, I can't even, that's like an altcoin going from zero to 25 cents in one day. That's a big move. Okay, so everybody is all freaking out about inflation. Everyone's freaking out about possibly the solvency of their governments. Good Lord. No wonder everyone's buying the dollar. Now, I personally think they should be buying crypto, but that's not the way it is today. And we'll talk more about that. All right. Now, S&P futures, AKA monkey market. Okay. Every time I look at monkey market, I need to use my Zen bowl. You know, it helps me. <sighs> okay. So the stock market looks like a series of ones and twos in Elliott wave, right? Okay. Down, back up, down, back up, down, back up. That's like winding up the spring. And then, you know, Putin, Putin does a cyber attack and then stocks go. Now that's probably why Bitcoin's freaking out today or in general, everyone's freaking out heading into the fed meeting on the 16th. Okay. So 
things are not looking good in stocks because of all kinds of scary things. And that's probably why ETH is down, right? ETH has maybe, maybe priced in all this fear in the short term. Yeah, if there's a black swan, but I still think ETH at 2,500 and Bitcoin at 38K have potential to at least be a trading buy. Now, if I get stopped out tomorrow, well, that's the good news, folks. It's a daily show. I get stopped out of the idea. And I'm just looking at this and I'm like, I, I can't be short the future of money, right? I'd rather be short equities, honestly. Okay, not investment advice. Now, just in case there wasn't enough shit to worry about, Chinese equities are falling out of bed. They're like, Bill, did you mean Russian equities? I was like, no, Russian equities are closed indefinitely. Okay, I'm talking about Chinese equities, FXI. These are mainland Chinese stocks that trade in Hong Kong. They are falling out of bed. Smells like a recession to me. Okay. So when you have a global liquidity crisis, you have like FUBAR in the financial legacy financial system. Everybody just starts selling everything. Okay. You want to sell FX, FXI and S&P? Yeah, I would. <laughs> right. Not investment advice. But selling crypto down here? Doesn't feel like it makes any sense. Is crypto eventually going to get dragged down? Yeah, probably. But I still think there's a huge case to own crypto. A huge case to try a trading long. Because this is a daily show. All right. Now, to underscore, to just to give you the level, this has definitely got to be on your watch list. You got to have VIX. It's the measure of fear in equities. 33 is the key level. If it's above 33... If I was an altcoin person and I see VIX moving above 33, I would think about my portfolio and not be long shit coins. If you look in the middle where I have COVID panic, basically what was happening at that time was everyone was getting worried. Fear would tick up and come down, right? Tick up and come down, right? There were like two or three days of that. And that's what's happening in VIX right now, right? It goes up, but then it goes down. They keep selling. Right. And what do I always say about that? Right. When they get done selling it, what happens if there's no more ammo? Boom, it goes up. So you want to be careful about VIX and you want to watch it at 33. Now, a brief word about commodities and crypto. Bitcoin and Ethereum are strongly correlated with wheat, copper, gold, and nickel. Wheat and nickel have already mooned. Gold may be the next thing that moons. Okay, because that's from our AI and common sense. Bitcoin and Ethereum are negatively correlated with oil. What does that mean? Well, that means if oil's going lower, Bitcoin has a shot at going higher. It's not automatic, but it has a shot. Now, let's talk about gold. And you're like, Bill, come on. Why are we talking about gold? Well, because gold could save Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? In other words, if you look at what's going on in stocks, if you look at this, man, you just want to like hide your head in the sand, all right? When you look at this gold chart, which is getting around, okay, everyone knows it's there. The teacup and handle that took like 10 years to make, all right, could lead to gold going up in $1,000 increments. Now, of course, if that happens, something awful will have happened in the world. And the question is, can gold pull crypto with it? I think there's a possibility. Right. Being long gold seems to make sense as the primary trade, right? As a hedge, potentially against crypto that you may want to hodl. Okay. G not investment advice. Now, GDXJ, that's the altcoins of the gold mining stocks. So small cap mining stocks in an ETF is GDXJ. Very volatile, not investment I'm not advice. Sure I understand. Okay, but it looks like it's breaking out, right? It's breaking out above a trend line. It held the huge FIB number on the last down move, right? And I'm looking at this and I'm like, wait a minute. If this thing takes out 48, it could, it could potentially go to 60 and I can draw a long-term target of 80, right? So if you're like, all right, well, let's see. If I want to hold on to my crypto and I figured out how to get short S&P somehow, not investment advice, or get long gold mining stocks, 
Because you got to remember, folks, there's a new monetary order. Who controls all the gold in the world? Well, you know, the Russians have a lot. The Chinese have a lot. And who else has a lot? Gold miners. Okay. Right. Just like crypto miners when Bitcoin is mooning. So there's always a bull market somewhere, as my legacy counterpart, Jim, Jim Cramer, says. So these are things for you to think about. Now let's go to Bitcoin. You're like, oh God, Bill, finally, we're going to talk about crypto. All right, I'm looking at Bitcoin and it was like, all right, there was a 13 bottom a couple days ago, market went up. Then there was a nine top, which we were talking about after while we were on the air or right after, okay? The market shits to bed and then support is between 38,100 and 38,700. I'm thinking if that level holds, crypto's got another leg higher to either 45 or 47. And if that doesn't hold, well, you know what? Then it's long gold, short S&P, hide under the desk. Okay. Again, the case for Ethereum. Now, the DeMarker Smart Stochastic, which is what you see at the bottom in the graph. So it'll give you a warning sign about volatility. Now, we would like to think that, you know, when the, the stochastic is high and you get the warning, that means it's going to go lower. Or when the stochastic or the, the indicator is low and it beeps or shades, that means it could go up. Now, that doesn't always work that way. It worked that way in October, right? When ETH went from, you know, 2,600 to 4,750, okay? Now, you also got the same signal right in the middle of the bear market in December and January and ETH fell out of bed. Okay. So crypto can go down a lot. No shit. Right now we've got the signal again. And the question is, can ETH hold? Right. I think ETH has got support at 2525, right? This is the four hour chart. We're out of DeMarc six. Okay. DeMarc counts certain sets of conditions. You know, I'm interested in one through nine and then one through 13. So we probably got another trading day of blah, okay, before ETH puts in another nine bottom. And if ETH puts in a nine bottom, 3,000 is possible, right? I think higher than that's possible, but I have to be realistic and I can't be a moron. I can't, all right? So how am I going to decide what's what? Like, how do I figure this out, right? It's like, all right, well, you know, certain things in legacy say crypto should go up. Stocks look awful. Gold looks good. How do I figure out the winner? How do I pick the winner, Bill? Tell me. Galaxy Digital. Yes, I'm bringing it back. An oldie but goodie, right? Galaxy Digital has been a fantastic indicator of crypto for years. Now, it's this simple. Galaxy Digital is the stock of a crypto hedge fund run by Mike Novogratz. Basically, you know, a guy I look up to in crypto. So if Galaxy Digital right now is unchanged, if it holds 15, or at least it was when I made the slide, then crypto could be okay. That includes Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, if Galaxy Digital closes this week below 15, then it's no good. And all this macro stuff swallowed us up. Zcash. You know, yesterday, I mentioned briefly after giving you 20 slides that every time Zcash goes up, the market dumps. And that's what I should have said. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the market update. Every time Zcash is up, the market dumps. And that's the market update. <laughs> so Zcash was up, the market dumped. Because that's always what happens. But Zcash is holding. Zcash is holding, and a lot of guys that I respect on Twitter and YouTube have picked up on this, okay? So the future of money, the new monetary order, which I talked about all of last year in vain, Zcash may have layer one functionality, the market's down, and Zcash is not moving. Now, <laughs> again, <laughs> this could mean I could have saved you all about 30 minutes and said Zcash is under, as outperforming Bitcoin, the market's going down, and that's the market update. It may be that simple. I kind of hope not, right? I think it's interesting if Zcash can hold. Because if Zcash holds and the market doesn't dump, remember 38,000, 2,500? 
right? Those levels hold and Zcash holds. Then there's some evidence that something is changing. Now, everybody put your crash helmet on because I'm going to talk about Dash. Every time I get excited about Dash, it's like fade me and short everything. I can laugh at myself. But I keep asking, this crypto is taken as payment by American fast food places in Venezuela. People in Venezuela get their wages in Dash. We're about to buy oil from Venezuela. What does that mean? Well, I don't know, but, but I'm certainly not really interested in selling Dash at 100, okay? Dash holds up, and Dash made a big new low, and the stochastics and the Williams indicators, right, made higher lows. So, you know, hit me with a baseball bat if it goes down. And I'm telling you right now, if this thing, if that divergence where the market makes new lows, but the stochastics make higher lows, if that's actually right, Dash is going to double. It's going to go to 180. It's going to go to the top of that thing, not investment advice. So it's almost like if you were ever going to do the trade, like think about it. Think about what we've said. Legacy looks terrible. Everybody's running to safety. Gold looks awesome. Crypto could follow gold. And there are parts of crypto that are normally like the redheaded stepchildren, right? That actually may look okay. So don't you have to err on the side of being optimistic, right? Because, I mean, has it paid to get bearish when it's down? I guess one day it will, but I don't think that day is today. Okay, near protocol. Now, somebody said they were getting hurt on this. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I'm seeing resistance at 12 and a half. Okay. So that, that chart accidentally got mislabeled. That should be 12 and a half, not 25. But near is still making a base. Near is still in one of those bullish accumulation cones. And unless the market's moved since I started talking, near is not down that much. So yeah, okay, people may have gotten caught holding near up top. But I mean, I mean, Medi's like one of the smartest crypto guys I know. And, and he thinks near is like the future of layer ones, along with stuff like ETH and Cosmos. Rune is holding. Okay. Speaking of, you know, shit coins that you should be really careful of. Okay. Very interesting DeFi narrative, not clear if they can execute, just to be clear. If they ever did execute, this could go a lot higher. Like the future of money and the future of finance, folks, got to show up somewhere. I mean, if it's not showing up now, when is it going to show up? Maybe in November after everything kind of adjusts itself. But man, I'll tell you what. I don't mind being constructive rune if it's above 545. There's definitely resistance there. You can see the market respecting that. So that means I've got it drawn right. Okay. So maybe you get a dip to, a dip to 477. Okay. Maybe you get a breakout to $6.70. Time will tell. Luna. Oh my God. I like FOMO in the Luna at like 101. It's on a paper trade. Put the stop at like 97. 97 is where I should have been picking it up because that was the support point. Duh. Okay. Listen, folks. Luna can just explode. You have a decentralized stable coin that is like backed. Oh, first of all, Novogratz is long AF, right? Uh, 97 is holding his support. And the next target is either 120 or 140, right? And if you're not stopped out, like if it doesn't take you out at 97 or take you out down below, say 96, you can actually hold the position at the higher end of the range and ETH bounces off 2,500, where's Luna going to be? Let's do it that way, right? Bitcoin and ETH stabilize, turn around. Bitcoin goes to 42 or 45. ETH goes to 3,100. Where's Luna going to be? That's probably the better way to say it. Same thing with Cosmos. Looks like everybody's tripping over themselves to puke this thing out again. I got support at 2747. 
Yeah, that trend line's a little outside the box. But this was an outside the box market update. Why is everyone selling Cosmos at 27? Because if Cosmos takes out 32, it can go to 40. Now, should you buy the dip blindly? I don't know. Depends what kind of capital you have. Has it paid to buy stuff when it's up? No. Has it paid to buy stuff when it's down? Yes. Right? Do it in American football. You run the play until it doesn't work anymore. And that is the market update. All right. Let's, let, let's get a screen share so that <laughs> find out like if the, if the market just moved 10% while I was talking, because that, that has happened. Okay. And then I will go to the questions and the DeMarc work. Cause I know y'all are hooked on that sugar. <laughs> All right. All right. So Bitcoin down 6%. Flip Burger is asking you to hit the like button. I would appreciate that. Okay. Does TVL on DeFi protocols translate to token price? It absolutely does. It absolutely does. Okay. Let me, let me unshare this screen and bring this up. Right. In other words, this was how you could have tracked Phantom when it was going up. Uh, AVAX when it was going up. Okay. And then you could also use it to track Luna. Okay. All right. So let me, let me screen share this. Okay. Let me screen share this DeFi Llama chart. Okay, there's total value locked in Luna up 10%. <laughs> right? It's just absolutely mooning. Right? Total value locked in Solana. It tried to get long Solana to catch the falling knife. And eh, wrong. Stopped out like five minutes later. Okay. Phantom. Okay. Total value locked in Phantom falling out of bed. Now, you know, I don't know if total value locked fell in Phantom because, you know, there was like negative fundamental news. It will be interesting to see if it comes back. Okay. But I mean, if you're, if you're into, you know, if, if you're into Luna or you're trying to figure out what's going on right in, in DeFi, Right, or which DeFi coin is going to moon, or maybe there's only one DeFi coin that's going to moon. Right, actually, let's just check Ethereum quick. So, DeFi locked in Ethereum is not moving. That number obviously has to get going. Right, I mean, that's why that's why ETH is down, even though inflation is up. But again, you know, the crypto presidential regulatory statement has come out and they didn't destroy DeFi. That doesn't mean they're not afraid of it, but obviously I would like to see TVL in ETH move up. Okay, now people are going to explode if I don't show them the DeMarc work in Luna. So let's get to that because I don't want anybody to explode. All right. Okay, Samir says hello. Hello, Samir. How you doing? All right. So this is the Luna 4-hour chart. So there is a DeMarc point at 106. Now, so I just got done saying all this bullish stuff about Luna. And from a four-hour chart perspective, right, it's probably toppy. Right? That's why my stop on my idea is like below 96, which is where this moving average is. Okay? So let's talk about how this works. You have a 13 top. You have a 9 top. That may not be constructive short term. If it takes out 106, because that's the DeMarc level, then that's bullish, All right? So we have to wait. Is the top a top or is the top not a top? I know, sounds stupid, but sometimes you have to just like wait and see. Now, if you look at Luna, right, on a daily chart, okay, it's maybe a little bit of a different story, okay? Let's get the smart stochastic going here. 
Okay. So, you know, no, no massive warning signs here. Okay. Uh, notice, notice, remember how I talked about the nine system, right? It, setup is what DeMarc calls it. That's one through nine. The, the, the one, two, three, four, five, all that, that's just a quantitative system counting a set of conditions, right? The high is higher than the high three days ago. You don't have to know the math, just follow the count. Now, when you have a trend that's really big, okay, you're going to go one through nine. That's set up. You're going to have a counter trend move, which is what we had when Luna went from 90 to 75, okay, in three days. Then the big move actually could start. That goes from one to 13. Now, is that what's happening in Luna? I don't know. But it's pretty good that on the daily chart with the market down, Luna is unchanged. Now we just have to wait and see if this formation on the daily chart brings in, I'm sorry, on the four hour chart brings in the bears, right? In other words, there is nothing more bullish folks, honestly, nothing more bullish than a bearish formation that breaks. And there is nothing more bearish than a technical analyst who's bullish at resistance. <laughs> okay. So we have to wait and see who's got control. Is it the daily chart and the bulls or are the bears going to try to short it at 106? For me, I would love for the bears to try to short it at 106 because then they're going to get stopped out, right? The token metrics grade on Luna is high. Now, sometimes, sometimes, you know, RAI will ride a trend and ride it a little bit too long. Sometimes RAI, like on Axia, which somebody was asking about, will ride a trend and that trend will just keep going. Okay. All right. So we've got some requests. Ben J is big on XMR. All right. Uh, <laughs> I said it was a give up trade and he picked some up. Well, I'm delighted if I helped on that. Privacy narrative is big. Privacy narrative is picking up. Okay. So here's XMR. Jesus, there's a huge wick up. Okay. 13 top, everyone sells. Okay. Um, is this the daily chart? Let me just check this. No, this is the four hour chart. Okay. So on the four hour chart, you're approaching a nine bottom right on top of support near 172. Let's see what the daily chart looks like. And I got one fun add on for this. Okay. So the daily chart is you wick up. But notice you're still going up on the three. See how the three is green? Interesting, right? They're smacking it, okay? But they're smacking it back to an old high or in that old high zone between 173 and say 158. All right. Let's for laughs take a look at the weekly because I was looking at the weekly on Zcash. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know this can't be right, but you know, if you look at this candle, this inverted hammer, that's what they call it. Right? So what does this candle mean? You opened here, you went all the way up, you came back down, but it was still green, right? This whole thing, like bears came in, all the bag holders sold it. And then somebody was down there waiting. you know, everyone's like, Oh, privacy is going to get the attention of the government. Well, I think Russian tanks have got the attention of the government. Right. And if people need to start moving money around, crypto is a necessary component of, pl of, of the plumbing of the monetary world. So, you know, I, I would love it if some of these things would wake up. Right. Right. I did Dash earlier. All right. Village Cooking says BTC is going to pop very soon. I would absolutely love that because I'm on like a, a, a buy the dip. I'm on like a buy the dip, sell the rally or, or, or wait on rallies until it comes back down. Let's put it that way. Okay. Here's the four hour chart of Woo network. Okay. Now again, with stuff like this, doesn't look terrible. Doesn't look good. It's in a range, right? That's the four hour chart. Now I know Novogratz likes this, so it's tough to knock it. 
right? It's sitting on moving average support, okay? And around, what is that? Uh, Where's the moving average? I don't know, 49 cents, okay? So, you know, that, that, that could be useful, could be, okay? All right, so somebody wants me to look at the ICP weekly chart. Let's take a look at the ICP weekly chart, see what that has to say. All right, so I, I don't have that count in ICP. Okay, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. Okay, so they may be missing some data today. Just check Phantom while we're at it. Let's go to, uh, yeah, let's check Phantom. Because I know we got a lot of people in Phantom who are like worried. Is that like totally fell out of bed? King says no one talks about sushi. You know, I know because we're so embarrassed because we loved it and it killed us, right? All right, so Phantom, all right, so here's what's going on in Phantom on the four hour, right? Here's the 13, here's the support that came from the 13 bottom at $1.15, and now it's at a seven, which probably means, right, eight hours from now, if they puke Phantom out to $1.15, you'll have a 13 and a nine bottom on the four hour chart. So total value locked is probably headed for Luna, but if you wanted to try it for a trade, you can. But you know, if you're long this stuff, I don't think I'd be puking it unless it went below 115, not investment advice. Okay. All right. Guys asking about Cardano. Boy, I interviewed somebody. Her name was Laura Shin. She wrote this book called The Cryptopians. Right. What's it? What's yeah. I mean, she's a journalist. She's smart, but man, Cardano people are so pissed off about that. I heard the Cardano people and the polka dot people losing their mind based on what she said, because it's about the history of Ethereum. So, <clears throat> all right, back to Cardano. So Cardano had a 13 and a nine bottom went up. Now it's coming back down and it looks like it's actually going to try to make another 13 bottom at 75 cents. You know what, folks, I just can be honest with you. Did, the first time it went down here, did I want to sell Cardano at 75 cents? No. Did I want to buy it at 85 cents or a dollar? No. Right? You just trade this range until it either it breaks out one way or the other in, in some of these old coins, right? So there's no reason to sell Cardano at 75 cents. I don't think there's any reason to sell a layer one network because Ethereum should be at 4,000 if you compare it to inflation numbers. Now, is Ethereum going to 4,000? No, probably not. Okay. But that's where it should be. So it, now, if Ethereum should be at 4,000. Quotes. <laughs> should Cardano be at 75 cents? I think not. Okay. Um, Vulcan. Okay. Let's do Vulcan. Okay, let's see what we got. Okay, so here's the deal with Vulcan. You're on a four-hour chart. You have the 13 bottom. Okay, you've got probably about 12 hours because you're at a six. So that's three to the nine, right? Nine minus six is three. You have three four-hour bars. So you got 12 hours. Now, could they puke Vulcan down to 840? Well, shit, I hope not. So that's going to mean Bitcoin and Ethereum get wrecked. So 12 hours from now, you'll know what's up in Vulcan. You should see that nine bottom and Vulcan should move. Now, let's check a daily chart. Now, that said, if you get, if you get 840 and you're not long Vulcan or you want to add and you believe in it, that's probably the place to add. So, of course, like I said, Vulcan pressing, making everyone scared. This is the daily chart, right? <clears throat> so, 922 is a big technical point. And look at this. Look at how many days. They've been pounding on this support level for seven days. 
and it's holding. It's holding. Now, I haven't talked much about the metaverse, right, because of the macro stuff. But if Vulcan doesn't fall apart, all right, Vulcan holds 913, or let's go back to the four-hour chart to give our Vulcan friends some love, all right? You know, it is possible that they could wick it down to 840 if there was a problem or, you know, some event happens. But that's where support is. And it looks like bears are pressing. Bulls have to show they can get off the mat. That's clear. But don't sell support. Right? If it breaks down, it breaks down. You have to deal with it. So 972 is support and so is 840. Right? And then you can deal with it, hopefully, from there. Okay. Okay, don't have hex. Let's see if I have VOS. No. Okay, somebody's asking for BNB. There's something we haven't talked about in a while. Okay. Well, look at what we have here. We have a big fat 13 bottom on the four hour chart, right on top of massive support at 363. And oh, by the way, look what they've done. They've killed it. Wow. I guess, I guess it's over for Binance coin, huh? I don't know. I mean, how was anybody going to expect realistically a crypto exchange out of Hong Kong? to shut off customers. Why the hell do you think it's located in Hong Kong or in Asia, right? I mean, they didn't want, you know, US, Canadian, English, UN. They didn't, they didn't want that. They didn't want regulators doing it. I mean, you don't have to like CZ, right? But he's not an idiot. So, you know, Binance gets hammered because they may get sanctioned, but sometimes when it comes to value investing, you know, let's see if this 13 bottom produces anything. This 13 bottom doesn't produce anything, then, you know, Binance may be in trouble. Okay. But obviously, it looks like everybody gave up on Binance coin. Okay. Uh, unwise. And here's why, right? I mean, you can shut off Russian accounts for crypto, right? You can do that. Is it going to stop Putin? No. No, it's just going to make them angrier. Now, what does that mean for Binance coin? Well, it means 363 has got a hold. You want to see the 13 bottom. And then two days from now, you may see the nine. And then you want to see it go up again, right? I mean, we don't have to like Putin. We don't even have to like Russia. But there are citizens, human beings, right? Zen Bell. There are human beings inside that country that may need help from a currency and monetary point of view, right? They didn't start the war. They may have voted for another guy. So maybe Binance is not dead. Let's leave it at that. Okay. Let's do sandbox. So glad somebody brought that up. It gives me a little bit of edgy for the show I like that. Can't, can't just be about charts, right? Okay, Sandbox, same drill as the other Metaverse coins, right? Now listen, you got to remember, this stuff is speculative. Sandbox land may be better than Sandbox the token. We don't know yet. What we do know is that there's a ton of support at 272. We got a 13 bottom. Probably in two days, we'll have a 13 and a 9 over here. If Sandbox stays down, let's look at the daily chart, okay? Okay, again, support at 263, and they're working on the 9 and the 13 on the daily chart. Right now, you know, here's the demarker signal, okay? Here's Sandbox basing during the whole war period. So Sandbox was already down when the war started. Now, it could be, could be that we could harken back to the days of the Sunday live stream where I would say the bigger the base, the higher in the space. 
So if 263 winds up holding in Sandbox, it'd be pretty funny if the metaverse caught everybody off guard. I don't recommend doing shit coins, but, you know, high quality metaverse, right? If they try to crush it and ETH holds 2,500 and they can't crush it, what's going to happen? It could pop back up again. Obviously, people are going to need a distraction from the world. That was true during the bear market. <laughs> that People thought that six months ago. Can you imagine the value of the metaverse in gaming now? Yeah, some of this stuff's way overvalued and is going to zero. But you want to give the big caps a chance, right? We're looking at VeChain now, all right? VeChain and Rune are, are two of the coins that I hate to love. That's how I say it, right? Because I, I, conceptually, I like them, but I'm a chart guy. So I'm not, I, I'm not here for, for concepts. And I'm also not giving investment advice. So be careful with this stuff, okay? Just because I talk about it doesn't mean you should go run out and, 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 you know, and buy it and put the rent money in it. Just, just saying. All right. Now, VeChain looks okay. It's probably got two more, two more like eight hours to go right before that nine bottom gets put in. I'm also very intrigued by this, right? You have a, like you have a low in price, but the momentum indicator never went down there, right? The momentum indicator is neutral or higher. Now V chain again, two days from now, you're going to have a 13 and a nine bottom, right? And when it comes to V chain, it's, I'm almost like, it's like, you got to shoot your shot. Right. If if something, if something in the Asian supply chain system cannot rally in this environment, when is it ever going to rally? <laughs> I mean, it's almost like Dash and all this other stuff. Okay, somebody suffering, no doubt, in audio. Okay, so audio's got comp competition, right? Uh, you got the 13 bottom and it went down. You got support at 59 cents. Now, what you may be looking at in audio is a give up trade. What's a give up trade? Well, it's just what I said. Everybody packs it in and gives up. So if everybody packs it in, in Audius, right, it may wind up down at 65 cents. Now it may not, it may just sit sideways to lower for another, say 12 hours, like everything else. Everything's working on a nine bot. Okay. Somebody says, Omar says, room is pumping because of the main net release at the end of the month. Okay. That's cool. Right. Hopefully the main net works. Again, I'm a chart guy. Right. That's, uh, that's outside my purview. All right. So we've got, we got to get back over to the other system. Right. Let's just check the market before we go doing that. Okay, Bitcoin's still down 6%. S&P futures are at least holding themselves together. Thank God. Jesus, that, that thing. Oh, God almighty. Literally, S&P is keeping me up at night. Literally. Okay, I may have written this down wrong. Feel free to DM, DM me if I got it right. I think I wrote down VOS, and I, I don't have that in the system. Okay, I know I, know I have Axia, right? This thing's unbelievable. It's like the only thing this thing does is sit still or go up. <laughs> I swear to God. Like, you know, I, I try not to learn too much about fundamentals. Like I know, I, I know just enough about fundamentals to be dangerous. Okay. But I mean, like I was like, yeah, you know, maybe you should take the money at 12. Then this thing just goes, uh, retest 12 and just starts to, like, it's like it's levitating. This reminds me of S&P when they first started doing QE, like right around QE2. It just kind of like levitates. And the next chart points for, at 1497. <laughs> like, I, I, you know, Token Metrics found this. Token Metrics, I think, got on this down here. Like, no joke. No shill. Uh, somebody, if, they, if you're in the comments and you were a Token Metrics user, I know Token Metrics was on this early like way early. Okay. Okay. Somebody's looking for a bounce in EGLD. Let's check that out here first. Let's check the Williams out, see what we got. All 
All right. So EGLD is like right in between support and resistance. Now, what I will tell you that could be interesting. All right. So it's a little outside the box, but it is an outside the box show. All right. So this could be a, a reversal candle, right? Now we kind of, you know, it pumped. We talked about that. Whoops. We talked about the pump. Now what, what could be happening in this Williams indicator is if, you know, sometimes after you get these reversal candles, if you get two or three days in a row, like if Elron can do this, like, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, and start moving higher, right? Elron could reverse course. Now, if Elron turns around and goes down, that's the end of the trade. Okay. Now, El Elron might start really going up again. It's got to get all the way above 160. But if you were holding Elrond, I would say hold Elrond, especially if ETH can hold together above 2550. Right. Now, if you get hosed on that, right, it's be probably because stocks went down. Okay. Ben J says Bill's soul is radiating. Right. That's what I, that's why I use my Vogel crystal. I know it's been nicknamed my Illuminati necklace, but this, this is actually what this is. That's what that's for. Okay. So somebody's asking for ENJ. I get the sense from looking at the chat that requests are just flying in. Be happy to help you. Please hit the like button. If you're watching the recording of this, you know, come on, folks, 200 likes. You know, I know everyone who's watching the stream is hooking me up, but really, come on. Right? Seriously. On demand TA. All right. So ENJ. ENJ looks sort of neutral on the daily chart. Let's go to the eight hour. Okay. Okay. So this Williams indicator is kind of negative near zero. So I don't have anything on that. Let's go over here. Let's go back to DeMarc. Okay, Petty London says, see ya, 20K Bitcoin. I know a lot of people who think that way. Some of them are seriously huge gold bugs too. My, my, my idea is it's room for everybody and they're like, no, it's the end of the world. It's going to blow up. Most people are smart. You know, you got to acknowledge the other point of view. I know crypto YouTube wants me to get on and say, buy this, it's going up 100X. I know that's what you want. But that's not what good analysts do, right? So I want to be a good analyst and help you trade, all right? Now, ENJ, okay, has the 13 bottom, right? Is holding, right? It's trying to keep it together, right? Same thing, you know, like three, four, you know, like, I don't know, 12 hours from now, we'll know what's up, right? 12 hours, two days, we'll know what's going on. I, I think this little, this like shaded, signal from the smart stochastic is really interesting because even, even in a bear market, the last time you saw this, you got a nice rally. You got one here too. So there's reason for optimism in, in engine coin. You just may have to wait. Be pretty effing funny if there was like some kind of positive metaverse news that came out. I don't know if I bet the farm on that. All right. But some of this metaverse stuff looks like it could be two days away from, from, from rally. Now, of course, if that happens, I'll look like a genius. You know, last time I got bullish metaverse, it turned out bad. Okay. But like I said, when do you buy metaverse when it's up 200% or when everyone's like forgotten about it? Probably when everyone's forgotten about it. Okay. Now Kyber, awesome token metrics grade, no doubt, right? 13 top here, right? parabolic spike up to 316. So this is how you would work with the token metrics grade. The token metrics grade on Kyber stays above 80. Okay. Then stay with the trade, right? That probably means it'll turn around because you know, you're, you're working on like a DeMarc three there. Sometimes what you do is you get a 13 and then you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So Kyber may not be done. Now Kyber may also be done right? Because it was at $1.20. Okay. So here's the nine top. Here's the sell signal, right? So how would I play? 
So the, the Kyber grade on token metrics is high. Okay. So if I was long, I'd move the stop up, right? Just give it a chance. Like the token metrics grade, if it's working, you just ride it. You just ride it and you move your stop up. And if you don't get stopped out, it's like Axia, it'll keep going. Okay. So that, that's how I would play it, right? Like, in other words, you want to buy that token metrics 80 signal when either the thing is in a range or when that trend is just starting, right? Token metrics grade will stay above 80 all the way until a trend ends. Now our quant guys are working on their version of DeMarc to help get you out, right? But that's why we have the YouTube channel. Now I'm not saying get out of Kyber. I am saying there's resistance at 316, right? And I am telling you to like, you know, not investment advice, but move your stop up. Okay. Um, metaverse on hold with too much real word, real world, you know what happening. Dude, totally get it. Totally get it. In other words, the worst thing that could happen in the metaverse is that it sits there on support and just dies or doesn't turn around and go back up. Right. Okay, so we have waves. Okay, let's check that out. Okay, so <laughs> uh, unbelievable daily chart here. Okay. So this is classic, right? So there's the 13 bottom. There's the nine, the setup, the return move, and then boom, off to the races, right? Now, if the token metrics grade on this, now it is approaching resistance. There's a lot of congestion up here at 3250. So common sense, people, if you bought it at eight and it went to 30, Right. You could just move the stop up, stay with the trend. But I know the token metrics grade waves was in the token metrics system, right? 10% off lifetime. <clears throat> now I, I try not to shill it too hard, <clears throat> even though I'm, I'm a token metrics employee, right? I try not to shill it too hard because frankly, folks, I think it speaks for itself. How the hell are you going to make money in a market like this unless you have AI filtering the small cap coins to the top? Especially if you got this wild market where like you've got to buy the big caps when they're down and sell them when they're up. Okay. <clears throat> okay, can I check Gala and Algo? Okay, let's see what Gala says on this chart. I don't think the Williams is going to give you anything on Gala, although I could be wrong. So on the daily chart, not much happening. Okay, four-hour chart on Gala, same story, right? You got to wait like eight more hours to see what happens. Really, really would be funny if Gala turned around and went up. I don't know that that's a market call, but... I, I think that would hurt a lot of people. I mean, meaning, I don't think anybody would think that the metaverse could rally. Okay. So, you know, this Williams chart on the eight hour, you know, is not looking so good, right? You got the momentum pointing downward. So you just got to see, I mean, th does somebody show up in gala, especially if there's a puke in the next 12 hours, do bulls show up? Okay. Someone's asking for QNT. Okay, I don't look at this chart often enough, to be honest with you. God, I am so interested in this. Is this idea of this thing being some kind of payment system? All right, so when the moving averages, when the Williams moving averages get all tangled up like this, it's basically, it's like a no trade. You don't, you don't trade when they get tangled up, okay? However, I know that that's not the answer you're looking for. So let's try to figure something out based on the DeMarc work.
Okay, so on the four hour chart, it's just really in a range. You may get a nine bottom in two days. Last nine bottom was on a big puke over here, right as the war started. Okay, let's see what you get on a daily chart. Okay, so this is not very exciting on a daily chart. I mean, it's, it's in a downtrend. The smart moving average is at 120, possible like weird 13 top. So this is what I would say. Probably this is neutral. Like normally I'm not neutral that often, but this is probably neutral. Neutral might be a good thing. Let the 13 top signal come out. Let, let's see what happens, right? If the whole market pukes and QNT holds, then I think this is worth a look. You get the white paper out. Check this out. Like QNT, XRP, Dash, Zcash. Dare I say it. Got to ring the Zen bell. Litecoin to prevent... a. a bad luck, right? Because every time Litecoin pumps, the market definitely goes down. Okay. But, you know, fast moving Bitcoin forks, payment system. Okay. Now somebody wants, uh, so somebody says ETH is running out of room on the daily. Someone's asking about Bitcoin. So, you know, we sometimes have to do this during the show, just go back and check out what we're looking at. I know we looked at the we, we looked at the DeMarc work on ETH. Let's look at the Williams work. I think I was actually working with a one hour chart a couple days ago, right? So here's the one hour chart from yesterday. Okay. Now, if ETH is going to go up, okay, you want to see ETH above 2618. Okay. So this structure, this isn't a Williams structure. This is different. It's called hidden pivots. Okay. Right now, I, I, I'm not sure. L let me see if I can change this on the fly. Let's try a nine day RSI to see what I get. Okay. So when you look at a nine day RSI, okay. Well, so we're focusing in, we're like, we're getting super zoom on this chart. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that looks like a new low for the move on the one hour. And I'm like, hmm, is that a higher low on the nine period or nine hour RSI? Hmm. That can be stupid bullish. Now it's a one hour chart. So it could be stupid bullish up to 2680, or it could be stupid bullish because people shouldn't be selling Ethereum based on what the inflation statistics are. It's like, you know, when I see this, that makes me want to get loud about what you tell people at the cocktail party, right? I mean, it's like, you know, like, it's, it's almost like we want to start a segment of like, what would the one chart market update look like? Like yesterday, it was Zcash pump market dump. Now, today it could be dash pump market dump, or, or it could be inflation up, ETH up. I mean, come on. Last time inflation, I mean, inflation at break evens are so far above its previous peaks. And ETH is down here at 2,500. It's like it's pushed out of a car. Okay. I know I said that already, but I don't mind saying it again. Um, Steve says, thanks for keeping it real. Okay. Okay. We have Theta and API 3. By the way, folks, please hit the like button. If you're doing requests and on-demand TA, right? I got to get the likes because I don't know how entertaining all this is to people who watch the video later. Although sometimes people stick around, right? To see if their coin gets covered. But if your coin's getting covered, please hit the like button. That would help us out. Okay, API 3. Okay, this was a massive moonshot. Goes up to 8. Everyone loves it. What happens? It goes down. Here's the 13 and the 9 bottom. Okay, now it's right on support from uh, the 13 Bill, bottom at 492. I'm not sharing my screen. Thank you. All right. All right, let's do that again. API 3 at 850. Everyone loves it. Goes down. Right, 13 bottom, everyone hates it. 
goes down more, ouch, right? Sometimes we talk about that. Get these top and bottom signals, and that could be one last final heave. See that a lot in crypto, okay? Now, again, we're sitting down here waiting for a possible nine bottom. So, you know, did it pay to buy it at 950? No. Did it pay to buy it at 450 back in February? Yes. So it's almost like an API three. It's one of two narratives. Either it's an altcoin and all speculative assets are about to get wasted. Okay. Or it's the potential accumulation zone for API three. And if you, if you held on this long and you're a bag holder, then wait until see what happens at 497. You don't want to puke it on support. You would puke it if it broke support and do the tax loss selling at that point. Okay. All right. All right. So multiple people coming in on Phantom. I can see Phantom. It's like 1010 News. 1010 wins radio in Manhattan, right? News and weather together every 10 minutes. So it's like Phantom every 10 minutes. Okay. Four hour chart of Phantom looks like supports at $1.15. So Phantom is probably in the middle of a give up trade, right? Total value locked, fell out of bed. Everybody went to Luna, right? So Phantom is probably a really great smoking fast project. I know a lot of people were onboarding into crypto, right? Because ETH was viewed as their dad's crypto. So Phantom has a, a, a massive value proposition. It's just a FUD storm right now. So you're going to know in 12 hours if they're going to puke it out or whether it's going to hang out and then you can make a decision. Okay. Wow. They're coming in fast now. Ren. Oh, this thing. God. This thing killed me. All right. Now, here's the interesting news about Ren. So this does look like a five wave structure up on a four hour chart. So not, not in a big hurry to get long, but okay. You know, 13 bottom nine top. So this is neutral, right? But, but you know, Ren is a pretty good indicator of what's going on in the layer zero interoperability universe. So if interoperability is going to take off, Ren should probably hold, I don't know, 34 cents. I think if Ren holds 34 cents, you could be more constructive. Realistically, to get bullish, it's got to be above 52. I swear to God, it has never been bullish to FOMO into strength in Ren. But that said, when it gets going, it can get going. Like this is a nine top followed by the counter trend move. And now this is like slowly but surely trying to chug higher. So I'm definitely not hating on Ren. I would love it if Ren broke out because that means Cosmos and Polkadot could move. Okay. Let's just take a look at Polkadot. Right. Everyone was asking about it and then no one was asking about it. Right. And that's probably because it trades terrible. Right. It just sits here like it's dead. Okay. Let's look at a four hour chart and see what we get. All right. So not, not a lot of excitement going on, but you do have support at 1662. And if there's no reason to sell ETH below 2,500, there may not be a reason to sell Polkadot at 1662. Wouldn't it be funny? Let me ask you this. Wouldn't it be funny if there was a next leg higher in crypto? So we would sort of like duck and escape the equities. Like, I don't know, the equities hatchet right? One last time. What if ETH, Bitcoin have one more run? What happens if everybody gets caught short or underinvested in Polkadot interoperability and metaverse? You want to talk about a contrarian idea. Now, of course, the whole market could turn around and blow up the next day. But uh, what do you do? What do you do on support? Do you sell it or do you buy it? You can hear that all over YouTube. All right. Can I check NCT? Sure.
Okay, this is the one hour chart. Okay, so it looks like a recent Coinbase listing. Okay, very hard to chart this kind of stuff. Okay, so you have buyers buying at 31 cents. You have sellers getting out at 45, probably because you have bag holders and everybody dumps everything on Coinbase listings. It's really a shame that that's kind of like a, a that's like the, it's like, that's like a death sentence sometimes for these altcoins. My boss called it once. He called it an altcoin called Coinbase, an altcoin graveyard. Okay. So yeah, I mean, there was this big moonshot higher on the daily chart. Sorry if that chart's all moving around. These moving averages are kind of tangled up. So I get the sense that there's maybe no trade to be done. All right. Now that said, okay. That said, all right. So let's talk about the trend and how strong it is. So there were a couple of what they call fractals. What's a fractal? Well, it's a point where if it goes above it, then you can, Go with the momentum, right? Like, look what happened here with this fractal, right? It took this out and exploded. But up here, it, it tried to take out some fractals and then ran out of gas. So 0 0.044, let's just label this NCT four hour, right? So that's, that's what I would tell you right there, right? Okay. So we got somebody asking for tornado cash. Tornado cash first came out. I told people they were crazy. DeFi privacy was never going to work with regulators. Guess that was before world war three. Okay. So, you know, again, you get the fractal, you get the move up, right? But you don't get any gratification out of it. I think the last time I pulled up tornado cash, there was resistance at 5169. All right. Now, here's what I would do with this. So sometimes you just have to draw plain Jane stuff, right? 40 was an old ceiling, right? Then you had this base down here. So this was the bigger the base, and this was the attempt at higher in the space, right? Now, the big question is, right, can you, can you get support at 40 to hold? Is the old floor, I, I'm sorry, is the old ceiling a floor? Now, looks. <laughs> Nobody could tell anybody anything in this environment. Like, oh, this coin's no good or this fundamentals doesn't matter. You know what, folks? Mr. Market is going to pick the winners. And this market and this macro environment gets more wackadoo every single day. So this looks like a top in tornado cash, right? Mainly because, you know, stochastics made a higher low when prices made a higher high. Now that said, if there's buyers at 40, with this negative setup, then you know tornado cash and privacy is for real. That's simple as that, right? It's just like, if it's bearish and then buyers come in, then you, you want to take a look at that. All right. Bitcoin 2020 is saying, please smash the like button. I appreciate that. Um, You know, stuff like Tornado Cash, Monero, and Zcash, stuff you got to pay attention to. Because this privacy narrative, just the ability to move money around without somebody, you know, I don't know, without someone telling you what to do. I mean, you know, 
There's a lot of scary stuff going on in the world, right? If there was ever a reason for that, it's now. Okay, so here's Sheeb, right? Is Sheeb money or is Sheeb not money? Okay. Sheeb kind of did its reversal. We maybe talked about this being positive at one point. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I see this fractal thing is very helpful here. So at point, you know, we're talking about 2252. So I'm skipping to four zeros. So Sheeb is right at a level where if Sheeb goes through these current levels, okay, you might say, all right, you know what? This is bearish. But if sheep can defy the bearish signals and crypto holds, you know, like normally I, I would look at this and say, you know what, this thing's had its day, but you don't know that because you don't know what can be, you know, money tomorrow, right? You know, somebody decides that we don't like the Euro anymore and somebody in France, somebody says restaurants, so we're going to start taking sheep, you know, you're not going to want to be, you're not going to want to be short sheep in that environment. Let's see what sheep looks like on the daily chart. So you, you have to, you have to balance reality with hopium in these mean coins, right? Like I know you want it to go up. Okay. So, you know, the scale doesn't work on this particular chart, but at 2332, there's support in sheep that's on a four hour chart. So she might be making a double bottom, right? It's a four hour chart. We'll know at the end of the day, is she making a double bottom? Every time I look at the chart, I know some guy the other day, is like, yeah, all these charts look the same. Yeah. You know, crypto all moves together, but if you got a 13 and a nine bottom in she, that could be interesting. The only question is, are they going to hammer it first? Is 2,500 in ETH going to hold? Are stocks going to fall apart? Is Putin going to blow something up? You don't know what the next 12 hour hold. The only thing you know is that you would prefer to buy support and sell resistance, not the other way around. Okay. Somebody's asking for UFT. Okay. I have to go to another system for that. Okay, so this is you. This is, is this right? Is this UFT? Okay, so this looks like Uniland Finance Token. All right, I think I got the right thing now. It's too bad I don't have the DeMarc work on this. Well, let's see. There's your inverted hammer, right? AKA bears selling the uptick and bulls counterattacking. Okay, interesting thing about this is here is a, a new low in price several new lows in price. Several new lows in price, but stochastics making higher lows. Man, when you see setups like this, okay, this could be bullish. I don't know what this is. I don't know anything about it. All I know is when these divergences, when these things go the other way, when you see these bullish candles, uh, I would take notice. So, you know, that's just really interesting. Okay. Someone's asking for CRV. Someone's asking about vacation spots. I'm like, dude, vacation, dude. It's like, we, we got the world at war, man. If you had Pearl Harbor in 1941, your next vacation was like 1946. That's probably what's going to happen here. <laughs> Go on vacation, you know, some, someday. 
But that's okay, because I want to be here for you people. So please hit that like button. Okay, so curve on the eight-hour chart is interesting, right? Um, you know, it, it made kind of a stalemate bottom and popped, but there doesn't seem to be anything here that's like really, oh my God, I have to buy it right now. All right, now curve is approaching support at say $1.88. I'm sure no one wants to hear that because it's trading at $2 right now. Right, but there is some support from a GAN number at a dollar eighty-eight, and this is interesting in curve because it does look like people freaking packed it in here, gave up, right? So this little reversal going on in curve, you know, say you held two dollars, say it held two dollars. I mean, support is at a dollar eighty-eight, but if you actually held two dollars and this thing started turning around right? Particularly this Williams indicator. I mean, right now it's not helping you, but you know, it, it could take two or three days. If curve actually started to go back the other way, right? It could build some momentum. It doesn't have it right now, right? It's close, right? It's close, right? And that may have been the bounce in curve. So I'm not hating on it, right? But I want you to be realistic that, you know, everything is not going to rally particularly if, if Bitcoin and Ethereum don't rally. But let's just check where Bitcoin and Ethereum are, okay? So Bitcoin is trying to come back to 40K. So that must mean, you know, some of our support points held. So we got tangled up moving averages there on that eight-hour chart. Not sure what that means, okay? Someone's asking for FTT. That may be an interesting look. Okay, so I'm looking at the four hour chart. I just looked at the daily. You notice it's kind of all the same. You know, two, three, two, three, I don't know, two, three bars from now. And FTT is going to have possibly a nine bottom right on top of 40, right? I mean, it wasn't a buy at 43 when you had the nine top. It wasn't a sale at 39 right down here. So the market's almost giving you a chance to do the trade again. And it may be a 40 to 44 range until further notice. Okay, the awesome oscillator is complicated. I, I have had to read a lot of books. Okay, Taz needs AVAX. All right, so AVAX, the good news is this is a 13 bottom, right? So you can lean on support around 70. So I think there's very much, a, there's, a, there's a good chance that this could be a double bottom in Avalanche. Let's look at the daily chart. Okay. So no clear read on the daily chart it has to like recover. Obviously, we would never want it to go down here. I'm not even going to say where that level is because that's going to make Taz upset. All right. I, I, I would think that you'd be better off. Okay. Daily chart, the weekly chart's not working. So I, I, I would say when you look at the four hour chart to bet on the double bottom at 70, right? So ETH 2550, See, you get this flavor when we got to go through all the coins, right? What's the theme, you know, four to 12 hours from now, there should be some sort of low. ETH should hold 2,500. There's no way ETH should be at 2,500. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if the stock market's going to zero. Right, each should not be down here. Now, if I get hosed on that idea, well, whatever. But my job is to read the chart, and that's what the chart says. All right. So people are looking at D five blue chips. Oh, look, I got chain link four hour chart ready to go. Okay, nothing one way or the other here. Let's look at the daily. All right, so with Chainlink, here, here's how I would do it. Chainlink's got the 13 bottom, and then it's got the climactic sort of slow puke down here. Two days from now, Chainlink could be a buy. 
Like, do not underestimate that there could be one more up thrust in crypto. You can always get hosed, right? And I don't think I don't think anything good is going to happen after this next big up thrust to say 47. Crypto will probably 47 in Bitcoin if you get there, right? That's when, you know, reality is probably going to kick in at that point. But there is a shot that, you know, there can be like one more thrust up. Okay. So let's look at Ave. Somebody brought that up. I know we got people suffering and all this like DeFi 1.0 stuff. All right. You know, I think the reality in Ave is supports at 110. Hopefully you don't have to look at that. Let's look at the four hour chart. Okay. So by any stretch, right, supports at 110. You probably have a nine bottom in eight hours, right? If you get the nine bottom, it should rally. Now it's either going to rally a little or it's going to go back up to like, say, 135, right? This could be like A, B, C. That'd be nice, right? That'd catch people off guard. The only question is, is equity going to let you do that? Just because they have a nine bottom doesn't mean you get a humongous rally. Now, if you have a nine bottom, it doesn't mean you want to puke out your coin. Give it a chance, right? Give it a chance. Okay. Somebody wants to see the RSI on Ave. Okay. Let's go to the daily. Type in Ave, see what we get. Okay, so I'm glad someone asked for this because this makes sense. So, you know, you, you do have, if you're looking at a nine-day RSI here, whoops, if you're looking at a nine-day RSI, there's a higher low in stochastics and a lower low in price. Now, Admittedly, this has actually been going on for a while because you had a, a low here. So this is like, this is almost like a, a triple divergence in Ave. Right. Now, of course, if you have a triple divergence and it doesn't rally, that should tell you something. Okay. But this has the potential to be constructive the way I say it, given a catalyst. So how would you trade this? Well, if you have a triple divergence, right, then you should be able to go to like an eight hour chart or a four hour chart, find a fractal, and then go with the fractal if it breaks out. So here's Ave on like a one hour chart, right? So this is like the tactical view. So if Ave goes up and takes out this fractal at 122, okay, then, then it could be on. Right. It could be on like there's, there's undoubtedly people who are trapped in this. Maybe they're looking to average down, not investment advice. Okay. This is a one hour chart. So if you're watching this a day from now, this will be different. Okay. But like I said, you know, this could be a giant freaking stalemate. Like I said, wouldn't it be funny? Wouldn't it be funny if crypto had one last shot to the upside? Cause it's a short show, right? If equities blow up, it's a short show. There's no show. <laughs> I mean, there will be a show if equities blow up because I can chart all that. But with ETH at 2550, just not really in the mood to sell. All right, here's the five, here is the last word because I got to go. The last word is if you have coins in your portfolio or you have flat out shit coins, right? And you're suffering, and you get a rally. Okay, you have to ask yourself on that rally, is it time to adjust my position? Conversely, if everything breaks down, which I don't think it's going to happen now, but eventually it probably will. You got to ask yourself, what kind of risk am I carrying? I did a show with Crypto Love today. Pretty much the first thing out of the guy's mouth is, if you've collected 50 or 100 shit coins, it's time to reevaluate, right? So if you get the rally, reevaluate. Right? ETH, Bitcoin, Zcash, Dash. Okay. Possibly the future of money. 
Metaverse on support, interesting. Probably not tradable, but still interesting. And some DeFi stuff really overbought, oversold. Avalanche, Ave, right? Some of this stuff that probably has a future is way oversold. Okay. All right. So I got to go. All right. And, you know, don't sleep on Luna. I agree. Okay. All right. Steve, thank you. Taz, appreciate you. Appreciate everybody who watches the video. I know on YouTube, everyone's like, oh, hit the like button or share it with your friends. I, I would like it if you do that, but I would also like to extend my appreciation to anybody who watched this entire video, particularly to all the guys who stick around and watch it live. Okay. You guys are like, you know, the three, 400, 500 crypto warriors and hats off to you. All right, folks, I'll be here to, I'll be here tomorrow. This is Bill Noble from Token Metrics signing off.